Hey y'all, welcome back to the Hack Shack. In today's video, we'll be looking at what I brought back from the Vintage Computer Festival Midwest this past weekend. It was a great trip. Can't wait to go again. Everybody was so super nice. I'm also going to be dipping my toes into Septandy for the first time. And I uh, hope you stay around and check it out. I want to start off by mentioning a couple of videos. One is the one from Retro Combs that covered our specific trip of the group that I went up with. And then I also wanted to mention this live stream that Ron's Computer Videos hosted with a bunch of folks, and it was really great. If you have any interest at all at the BCF, that will probably cover any of your questions that you may have. Now, before I get into what I brought back, I wanted to mention a couple of cool systems there. There were tons, but I just wanted to mention these two. The first one was a DEC PDP-8. I just love these things. And the guy, I can't remember his name, so sorry, but uh, he was so nice and just told me the whole story about the thing. It was really great. It was just really neat to hear some stories about that particular system. The next system that caught my eye was this Burroughs machine. Um, the reason it caught my eye was because one of my first, like, you know, grown up jobs was at a state agency back in South Carolina where I grew up and we had a Unisys branded system like this and uh, it ran CTOS and we had a bunch of PCs that had some special cards in them to bridge the gap between that and uh, PCs so the PCs could still act like the old uh, CTOS terminal. So that, that was kind of neat to see. So we had a good day and uh, gathered our things and put them in the car and headed back. Now you see that pet there? I saw that pet too, but someone saw it a little bit before I did. Please refer to the following dramatization to see how that unfolded. I got you a pet. Oh, you almost had it. You've got to be quicker than that. I'm just kidding. I know that I can go see that. It's literally a few houses down the street. But uh, here's some of the stuff that I did get. Uh, some great stickers from some super nice folks. A new joystick in this MC-10. And I know a lot of folks think of that as a doorstop, but uh, it looked kind of fun and I thought I'd give it a try. Now, another thing that caught my eye along with a pet were these Vectrex machines this guy had. I've always liked these things since first playing with them at the Louisville Arcade Expo several years in a row. I don't remember these things, I guess, when they were in their prime. Probably a little too fancy for me. We only had friends that had, you know, 2600s and stuff, but these are so neat with their vector displays. I didn't have any trouble at all getting the youngest to help test this one out. I think they enjoy playing it quite a bit. That number four button is a little sticky. I may end up having to work that over a little bit. One of the things that pushed me over the edge to get this was that it included a, this multi-cart which has like every possible Vectrex game on it which was really neat. I think I may end up printing a 3D case or buying one for it. And now we begin the Septandi portion of the program. Now I have a confession to make. This is essentially the first Tandy I've had. Again I know some people uh, hate this one but I like to tinker with stuff and I'm going to tinker with this one for a while. Maybe I'll keep it. Maybe I won't. Maybe this will be the uh, first step into uh, this whole TRS-80 Coco world. We'll see here. So when I was a little kid, I had my VIC-20. Um, but my cousins up the road did have a Coco 2. I confirmed that on Facebook. And I do remember going up there and they had some cartridges. And I believe they may have had a tape deck as well. But um, that was probably the majority of my Tandy experience. But like most of you, we did have a uh, Radio Shack even in my little small town. And... It was one of our favorite places to go mess around back in the pre-try to sell you a cell phone days. You remember those. Maybe when they only tried to get you in the battery club. But uh, that's been a long time since then. I think they tried to uh, get that fire back going again like this commercial shows. But I don't think they ever got back to that point. What? The 80s called. They want their store back. Now, this footage I found seems to be from 1987 that uh, some guy took before their stores were getting remodeled. So that's kind of cool. So the stuff in here, this era, is kind of maybe a smidge before this time, a uh, year or so, is what I really remember. Like there was a grocery store and a shoe store near the Radio Shack in this big plaza in my hometown. And we would always go in there and play around with the computers and stuff. And uh, depending on how busy they were or how annoyed the salespeople were, 
they would uh, let us hang out or show us things. But sometimes, you know, they'd, they'd uh, essentially run us out of there. But it was always a pretty cool time and fond memories of that. All right, let's see what we've got here. I don't even know if this thing works. I was told it worked. And uh, I did not see it work. So that's on me. Uh, I saw another video. It's kind of funny. The guy said these are always in boxes because people got them and uh, didn't like them very much and stuck them right back in the box. And that's why you find so many that still have the box. Let's get in here and see what we got. All right. Let's see here. Uh, startup, quick start kind of thing. Oh, that's neat. Functions, control, stick that over here. Wow, is this the warranty card? Oh, this is for the news registration. Look at that. Ah, uh, cool. Nice little uh, manual here. Oh, look at that. TRS-80 MC-10 Micro Color Computer Operation and Language Reference Manual. That'll be something to look at. All right, there we go, right there. Let's see, let's get this out of here. All right, this is RF cable. Foam out of here. I bet I'll never get this back in here. Let's get this guy out. Let's get this out. Here we go. Let's see here what we got. Could use a little cleaning up. It looks like a. Looks like somebody got the soldering iron close to it at some point, or something. See that? That's fun. Interesting. Let's see here. Uh, nothing's rattling around. That's always a good sign, right? Look at that uh, channel select, three or four. Power supply run here. AC 8 volts out. Hmm. Let's see what we got. I see, I know there's a composite mod uh, out there. Um, that I'll put the URL right there, but uh, it was sold out. I saw where the, um, I guess not too long ago, those ladies did the uh, did a composite model on their MC-10. I wouldn't mind doing that. And of course, there's memory modules and the ones that let you do some other tricks. I think I actually have a TV with RF, a tube TV somewhere. I'll be right back. All right, let's see what we got. We got something from deep within the bowels of the junk. Looks like this thing's got a bunch of paint overspray on it. And of course it's dusty. Let's give this a little, uh, let me give this a little wipe down here. So I can find some power for the uh, actual power supply here. I'm gonna unhook that and we'll check that with the multimeter just in case. There you go, you can see that, right? I guess it's supposed to be, what did I say, 8 volts AC? Let's see what we got. 9.5. I'm assuming that's close enough if it doesn't have a load on it. If not, we'll just blow it to Kingdom Come and find something else to play with. Let's get this thing dusting off. <laughs> All right, that's good. Now, one thing I do know is that... That RF is an RCA, and this is just going to have a cable TV dilly dally on it. I think I may actually have one of those uh, F type to uh, RCA somewhere, but let me go see if I can find that. All right, so this this is kind of hilarious, and uh, I'm sure my wife will shake her head because she's always asking me why I keep random crap. Probably like some of you. So I've, I've got a um, a BNC to uh, RCA male there. I guess whatever, you know, that BNC. Then I've got a F to the BNC outside there. <laughs> and then I've got a, a female, female RCA. So I think that <laughs> these three janky things together will let me plug into the, um... oh yeah, and another coax jumper. That's hilarious. Okay, let me go get that. All right, I got a nice, uh, you know, one of these nice thick 
made by the cable guy, or either I did with some compression ends here. But <laughs> we're gonna stick this on the one end of the, uh, man, this is waiting to, this thing is gonna break off, or it's asking it to be broken off. Look at this, this is crazy. All right, let me, let's see if I can plug, plug this in on this end. All right, now this end is gonna go to the RF. Look at this, that's a, <laughs> that's a mess. All right, so we're gonna put that into there and I think that's gonna work, hopefully. Let's get something set up to uh, point at the screen here and we'll see what kind of luck we have or do not have. Now, let's see if this thing will juice up and work. So that's off, let's see. That is on, it says, did I plug that in? Is there a light anywhere? How do I do, is it pulling? Okay. Hey, look, four. What, cool. You know what, I didn't even look, the bottom switch is probably on four. Yes, it is, okay, fine. There we go, cool. Not terrible, going through all that junk. All right, so I know, um, let's see, the beefcake dude, <laughs> from uh, Twitter talked about typing in some big long program as a challenge. I don't see that happening, but uh, for this first little installment, my first little Tandy thing here, I think I'm just gonna do the old, uh, you know, fill the screen up a crap deal. So let's see how these little keys do. Uh, let's see here. Where is the doodad? Is it control for that or shift? Right, I guess that's that. Is it, whoa, that's not what I wanted. Uh, boo. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Are these also like shortcuts for that stuff? I don't know. There's a lot I've got to learn here. So this is just my uh, tinkering around for the first time. Does it go to until? Right. Is it exec instead of run or something like that? Is that what I read? Nope. Probably did something stupid, didn't I? Hey! Cool. I'm gonna consider that a success. So uh, I think I'm gonna see, what I wanna do is um, either rig up something with some jumpers or whatever, or get a proper cassette cable for it and then use an MP3 player or laptop or whatever and play some of the WAV files into the thing for um, loading programs maybe. And uh, I, I did I see some that are a C10 file and some that are WAV. Obviously the WAV is a sound file and I didn't know, maybe I'm missing it or I'm being too impatient with my Googling. I'm assuming there's a way to convert the C10 into a WAV file. I'll keep looking, but if you happen to to watch this and you know oh yeah use xyz program feel free to throw it in the comments and i'd super appreciate it and uh, i guess that's going to be about it hey if you made it this far thanks for watching i hope to see you again next time take care bye bye